Welcome to our MES video about model-based development, or MBD for short. In this video, we will discuss the 10 biggest problems developers and companies face when it comes to MBD and offer solutions to these challenges. MBD is state-of-the-art for today's software development, especially in the automotive field. Increasingly complex software in cars has called for front-loading of quality assurance throughout the development cycle, and model-based development has shown that it can deliver. The increase in productivity in using autocode generation can yield up to 50% less implementation time. There is significant improvement of software quality with up to 40% less software errors and overall a reduction of development time and cost. Up to 30% time and cost savings as compared to code-based development. However, model-based development also comes at a price. Nobody said it would be easy. There are still some challenges you might face when implementing model-based development. Today we will discuss 10 exemplary challenges in model-based development and the approaches to solve them. We will have a look at mismanaged projects due to improper resource allocation, on-time deliveries that are hindered by overly complex models, inefficiencies that come from inconsistent models, error-prone modeling styles, disorganized testing and reporting of test results, poorly formatted and ambiguous requirements, development teams that are not reporting their current status, the problem of accurate and timely status to upper management, poorly trained engineers for Simulink, and non-compliant processes to ISO 26262. Let's start with the first point, mismanaged projects due to improper resource allocations. Have you ever felt drowned in a complex project and maybe even missed a deadline? If you answered yes, was it at least partly due to underestimating the size of the effort that was still needed? Well, MES has a tool that can assist with these challenges. MES MX Ray can provide objective metrics. These metrics can actually evaluate the size or the volume of your model. We call it global complexity. Global complexity can be shown in a table with regards to the root model itself, as well as subsystems and the content ordered by complexity. These numbers here, the global complexity, can indicate the relative amount of effort for a specific task. You can use this number and absolute data from experience that you have from previous projects in order to calibrate. Let's have a look at an example. Maybe from an existing project with these numbers here, you know that a model that has a global complexity of roughly 25,000 Halstead model volume may take the testing team five days to test for ASL A or 12 days to test for ASL D. Additionally, your review team may need another day and your calibration team will need another week. So if you have another project that also yields 25,000 in volume, you already have some numbers that you can compare. This allows you to make informed decisions about the amount of feasible changes to make in order to still meet the deadline. You will get an overview of how much still needs to be done. Or, if you have a fixed amount of required features that have to be solved within the deadline, you can calculate what you still need to do. Problem number two. On-time deliveries that are hindered by overly complex models. Models, even with the best initial design, may become complex over time. They may even become overly complex due to added bug fixes and new features. Statistically speaking, the more complex a part of the model is, the higher the chance that a bug may be present in that part of the model. Therefore, reducing the complexity makes finding and fixing a potential bug easier. We already had a look at MX Ray, one of our tools that can also help with this problem. In particular, it can help you to identify the most complex part of the model and enable you to make informed decisions. MES MX Ray can provide a list of the most complex subsystems. You can then use this list to prioritize the next steps or actions you want to take. You can have a list of all your subsystems here, see the local complexity, so the most complex first, and you can also see additional model metrics and properties that can help with your decision here. For example, the number of interface inputs and outputs, elementary signals, global complexity, the cohesion or incoherence on that specific level, the ratio of functional and structural blocks. So you have a quick overview and can see what parts of the model need to be addressed to make the best use of your limited time and resources. Even better, the list is really quick and easy to create. Problem number three, inefficiencies that result from inconsistent models. 
There is probably some truth when you say that there are at least 10 ways to do anything in Simulink. There is a lot of freedom in using Simulink, but the benefits of this freedom may also be dwarfed by considering the many different consumers that actually have to work with your model afterwards. These consumers could be the development team itself, or review teams, a calibration team, a test team, and so on. Each new modeling style will require each of these consumers additional time to understand what's going on in the model and understanding the model itself. Choosing and adhering to one modeling style that you decide on together will increase efficiency for everybody involved. The MES Model Examiner, or MXM, ensures that you stick to one modeling style. The MES Model Examiner allows you to enforce consistent modeling styles and identify and correct non-compliant model patterns. The list of topics of guidelines that give you recommendations on the modeling styles and the modeling pattern are checked with the tool automatically, as you can see here, and any deviation will be listed as a failed finding. You can see details about why a specific failure occurred, why the modeling style was not fulfilled, and more details about how to enforce and how to solve this issue. You can even use auto repair on many of these guidelines to automatically repair your model. This brings us to the fourth problem. Error-prone modeling styles. As I already mentioned, there are several ways to do something in Simulink. It is very flexible and powerful, but sometimes some of the options can be very subtle, very difficult to find, and can cause misunderstandings for the reviewers of a model, for example. Let me give you an example. A summation block can be configured to saturate on integer overflow in some instances, but not in other instances. Such implicit configurations can easily lead to wrong assumptions about the model and also risk possible errors in the model. MES Model Examiner can help here as well. MXM enforces defensive implementation techniques, the use of language subset, and also the consistent and explicit data and control flow. A large library of guidelines and checks on these topics are included with the tool as well. A starter set will let you get right down to using the model examiner on your models right away. Problem number five, disorganized testing and reporting of test results. How well organized is your testing process? Are you able to repeat all the same tests that have gone through a formal review process? Many companies have random testing practices that are not very well documented. If you want to increase your testing efficiency and even the ISO 26262 compliance, the MES Test Manager can help you. The MES Test Manager, or MTest for short, is a framework to support requirements-based testing. The automated interface analysis allows automatic testbed generation and supports MUL, SIL and PUL simulation. Any change in the interface can also be automatically adapted. The MES Test Manager allows requirements traceability to test cases and to the evaluation. It comes with the flexible MTCD language to model test cases and test scenarios. There is automated regression and back-to-back -back testing with reference data, and last but not least, comprehensive reporting and documentation of the tests. You will have a list of all the data, input and output signals, test vectors, as well as coverage data on your structural coverage, on assessments and requirements, as well as test cases. Problem number six, poorly formatted and ambiguous requirements. Now this is a tricky part. Many companies will admit that their requirements could be much better in terms of clarity and how well formatted they are. In order to solve this problem, MES presents MARS, a semi-formal syntax to ensure well formatted and unambiguous requirements. MARS also is a source to generate assessments for the automated validation of requirements and MARS can help you to generate logic test cases to test the requirements. Let's have a look at MARS the mTest Accessible Requirements Syntax. If we have a look at a typical pros requirement, glide slope control is armed when glide slope is commanded and enabled. Notice the first things, armed, commanded, enabled. Apparently they are states of signals that are not more clearly defined or identified. So first of all, your requirement is lacking the information which signal is meant the actual name of the signal in the interface of the model to let the tester know what input to stimulate. And what are the definitions of armed, commanded, and enabled? Well, Mars provides a syntax format, just like a questionnaire that you can fill out. When does something apply? What shall be assessed? 
and how shall the system react? You can see, for the typical requirement here, we can rewrite it in Mars syntax, saying while the signal GS command is equal to true, and a signal GS signal is equal to true, the signal armed shall always be true, for example, within one time step. You see, you can also identify the parts that come from the original prose requirement, some parts that have to do with the actual implementation in the model, and some additional clarification that is important, especially for the test team, on how strictly you need to follow this specific requirement. In editor syntax, the requirement could look like this. Now the Mars requirement can be the base for generating a logical test case, to simulate a specific situation in the model in order to test whether the requirement is actually fulfilled or not. This test case is generated from a truth table that analyzes the possible combinations of model stimuli in order to trigger a requirement. Mars is also the basis for creating assessments that follow the original requirement and generates a comparison vector to understand whether the requirement is fulfilled at any given time during the simulation. In the overview in the report, you will have a very quick understanding of a specific assessment, whether in a test case the requirement is fulfilled or not fulfilled. You have traceability in test cases here, as well as error messages in case there is a fail. Problem number seven, development teams that are not reporting their current status. If you're a project manager, maybe you've already had the experience that sometimes getting a status update from your team is similar to pulling teeth. So why not relieve your team from this task in particular? Why not just have it done automatically? The MES Quality Commander or MQC can do that for you. The MES Quality Commander can be used to show quality data from report data gathered automatically. You can set up the tool environment for automatic reporting of the status, for example, in continuous integration with Jenkins. You can automate the quality assurance and report generation in such a setup, gather and display the report information at a glance in the MES Quality Commander. A typical page could look like this. You have your project overview here and your artifacts, the different models, in your project. You can also see the development of your project over time in terms of quality, good, acceptable and bad. As for a specific quality assurance measure, here for example testing, you can see the detailed tool specific data as well. These tool pages are available with the MES Quality Commander for all typical quality assurance tools of the software development cycle. Problem number eight is a related one, the need of accurate and timely status updates to app management. Have you ever had to provide a spontaneous status update to someone who is higher up in the company than you? Someone who is less interested in the minute details of your project, but more in a quick summary, overview and outlook. Well, the MES Quality Commander can help you here as well. The quality assessment with MQC is based on a quality model. This quality model defines how to combine all the low-level details from reports and QA measures and how much impact each one should have. The data finally accumulates in a single number. This is the overall quality status of your project. The overview could look like this. You have your detailed data here. You have the accumulated data for your artifacts or quality properties, or for your whole project. You can even see the trend over time, either by quality assurance method or by artifact and the total evaluation over time as well. And even better, a PowerPoint report can be created really quickly as well. Number nine, poorly trained engineers for Simulink. Is your company growing? Has there been a large number of current hires? Well, many companies are growing fast. But whether recent college graduate or mid-level engineer, it takes some time to come up to speed with the company's policies and defined processes. And unfortunately, not all colleagues have a strong MBD curriculum or are very awesome Simulink modelers when they graduate. The MES Academy has a number of training classes to support you here. We have recently released our new MES training classes for 2020. The highlights, of course, are the introduction to model-based development and quality assurance of embedded software, the model-based development in compliance with ISO 26262, Challenges and Effective Solutions, which is our most popular training, and our MES Summer School, a five-day training class on introduction to model-based development, so save the date, that's coming up in June. You can find our whole curriculum under the web address here. 
Problem number 10. Non-compliant processes to ISO 26262. Are you getting a lot of pressure to increase your compliance to ISO 26262? Well, the industry is moving quickly into that direction. MES experts offer consulting and supporting services in this area. MES provides the ISO 26262 Process Deployment Service. This provides guidance for your ISO 26262 and ASPICE compliance software development process. It includes deriving safety requirements and best practices for model-based development in the automotive domain. The Process Deployment Service consists of five levels of services and expertise provided by our highly specialized experts. These five levels are analyzing existing processes, methods and tools, developing a process manual, creating developer manuals, implementing ISO 26262 compliant development and development support. In conclusion, switching to MBD creates new challenges, but it also offers efficient ways to solve these challenges. We had a look at how to deal with mismanaged projects due to improper resource allocation and problems in on-time deliveries that are caused by overly complex models. The MES MX Ray can be a tool for you to solve problems here. We talked about inefficiencies resulting from inconsistent models and error-prone modeling styles, where the MES model examiner is the helpful tool to use. Problems that occur from disorganized testing and reporting of test results, as well as poorly formatted and ambiguous requirements, can be addressed by the MES test manager. The problem of not reporting the current status of development teams or providing accurate and timely status updates to upper management can all be solved by the MES Quality Commander. And last but not least, training for engineers and assuring the compliance with processes like ISO 26262 can be provided by the MES Academy. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here, Model Engineers DE, or visit our website, www models-engineers.com. We hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for joining us today.